to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. Katha Sarita Sagar or the Ocean of Stories is a retelling of a much older set of tales that were retold by the 11th century Kashmiri poet Somadeva. The original source of these stories is a text called Brahat Katha, an epic penned by Gunadhya around the 1st century CE. This work was written in a now lost language, the Peshachi. The Katha Sarita Sagar is not just a collection of fantastical tales but also a reflection of what life and society were like in the Indian subcontinent over millennia. Meena Arora Nayak, a literature professor from the University of North Virginia Community College who has studied and written about the Katha Sarita Sagar, takes us through the layers of history it reflects. Meena, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's such a pleasure to read your book because actually uh, I, I think you set the stage well in the introduction when you talk about how to read this, uh, this Katha Sarita Sagar and how you have read it. So what, let me start off by asking you that this was part of a larger body of work that you were doing on myths and legends around India, the folk tales. How did you land on the Katha Sarita Sagar and what did you take out of it for your rendition of it? Thanks for having me on, Minnie. I really appreciate it. And I'm delighted to meet you all. So um, um, yes, let's talk about the Katha Sarita Sagar. I've, I've been, I've, it was thrilling to write this book or retell it rather. Um, so um, I was talking to Minnie earlier that um, when I started talking to Aleph about retelling some ancient classic tales, the first word that was mentioned was Katha Sarita Sagar and that we've got to do a quote unquote Indian version of the Katha Sarita Sagar. But, suddenly the conversation shifted to myths and folk tales. So let's do myths and folk tales from across India. And you can draw from the Katha Sarit Sagar. So hence my earlier book, The Blue Lotus came about. I started gathering material on myths and folk tales and I took a lot from the Katha Sarit Sagar. Even before I had finished The Blue Lotus, uh, Aleph got in touch with me and said, let's do the Katha Sarit Sagar now as a whole. And I was um, a little nonplussed, like, oh my God, I've, I've drawn so much from it. Uh, it's going to be hard to put it together now, but it wasn't, my goodness. When I, so I reread it, I had read it earlier. Um, I had always, I, in fact, I have always been bothered by the fact that um, all our ancient classics, and I'm, those of us who are readers in English, uh, we read our ancient classics in translations that are done by non-Indians. I'm sure that there are some wonderful Indian translations as well. I just didn't have access to them um, when I was growing up and I was in college. Here in the West, I rarely ever come across an Indian translation. And it always bothered me. It's like, why aren't we doing these translations? So the non-Indian translations, the Western, the, you know, the Western translations, they're fantastic brilliant and the you know the cultural context is also accurate to a certain extent but there's a there's a I, I want to say a little daisy touch missing you know that in-depth look which where which become makes it makes it intimate it makes it more personal so I, I was always bothered by that and I mentioned that to Aleph saying you know this is this has been a pet peeve of mine for a long time and you have just literally touched upon a very sensitive nerve so they echoed the same sentiments as that's the reason why we want to do it Hence, of course, um, the Blue Lotus came about and Katha Sarit Sagar came about. And I Mini, mean, I also want to mention here that um, one of the key reasons why I, I was dying to do Katha Sarit Sagar was um, I had read all the, of course, um, uh, I had read it from this perspective of folk tales, which of course it is, a, it's an actual fountainhead of folk tales, Indian folk tales. But more than anything, there's something that is lost in all the all the versions of the Katha Sri Sagar, which is actually the protagonist. It's he's um, he's part of the frame story. He is um, he's uh, he's he's the one the conduit on which you know all the folk tales actually hang. But he's nobody knows about him. His name is Narvahan Datta. And of course, what scholars say is that the reason why he is not remembered or he is not popularized is because he's a flat. He appears to be a flat character. He's, he's boring. He doesn't do much. He marries 26 women and the whole book is there, you know, throughout the chapters, he just pursues a woman, meets her, marries her and, and loves and desires her, basically. That's what the whole thing is about. 
But really um, what people miss out on is that this was the perfect protagonist for this book because the Katha Sagar is actually what we call a Kam Katha, which is a book of love and desire. So obviously he fulfills his task completely. He's all about love and desire. And more than that, of course, this whole story is about him. It's how he reaches the status, which is an ultimate status of a Vidyadhar. And the whole book is about Vidyadhars. Vidyadhars are these magical creatures who had, um, who were replete with yoga, mantra, and tantra. They're called wisdom holders, basically. They're nature spirits. Um, they live on Gandhamadan mountain, they're just like the Gandharvas. And so, um, but, and they have their shapeshifters and they can fly in the air and they can disappear at will, et cetera. They, they're, they're not, they're not each other. They are, in, they are not immortal. They also have life and death and follow the same principles. But he, his ultimate destiny in life is to become the Chakravarti of Vidyadhars and to rule the world as the Chakravarti of Vidyadhars. This is his, this is his purpose in life. And so I wanted to tell this story because of Narvahandatta to sort of uplift him from obscurity and say, this is what the story is about. Yeah. So I Narvahandatta chasing 26 princesses through the Vindhyas. That's <laughs> natural. but let's take a step back. You know, because uh, even Somadatta uh, uh, who, uh, who writes this uh, work or at least uh, you know, puts it together as a compendium for uh, the queen in, in Kashmir, um, says that it comes from an earlier uh, work by Gunadhya, the Brahat Katha, which is perhaps uh, the proto-storytelling compendium, so to say, because a lot of the Panchatantra and the Katha Sarita Sagra come from there. So let's take a step back for those of us who don't understand this, this particular thing. Tell us, uh, of course, there's a legend or a, a myth related to Shiva on the origins of the Brahakata. But tell us about the Brahakata. But would this book have been there when Somadatta wrote the Katha Sarata Sagar? How do you see it when you have studied it? Yes, yes. So I want to. So there, there are two schools of thought. Some people believe Gunadia was actually a fictitious character, and of course, as it happens in Indian uh, literary traditions most of ancient classic texts are supposed to be have been written by numerous authors because you know there is no individuality in our literary text vyasa for example is a pen, is a pen name maybe for for a, for communal writing in a sense but uh, i'm actually of the belief that there was a gunadhya there there's some 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 i want to say facts of his life that sort of um, and there's, there's the other school of scholars that believe that there was actually a gunadhya who wrote who wrote the story so he was um he was of mixed breed he was a, he had a brahmin father and a and a naga mother um he uh, he lived in patishtan which is which is the, which was the capital of the satvahan kingdom so there is actually an oh and he's mentioned in Ashtiha, in panini's Ashtiha. he's also mentioned in 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 uh, Arshastra. so there is mention of him in passing nobody mentions the Brihad katha per se and so it so it, it, there's a sense that there was a gunadya and yes he was a writer and so the i had this in other words i have so this is an argument i have no reason not to believe that there was a gunadya so yes, he did, I, I believe that it was, and he did write the Brihad Katha. And we know also we can say, because there are five versions. So people, scholars have discovered that there are five different versions, I want to say, of the Brihad Katha, if, if we consider the Brihad Katha as the old text. And so all of these have similarities, which obviously came from an origin text. Mm -hmm. It must have been written. So why I tend to believe that Gunadia existed and Gunadia did write the Brihad Katha, which was, which as you know, was, which as you said, was actually uh, written probably around the first century. So 10 centuries later, and it was in existence when, when Somdeva was, was, wrote the Katha Sarit Sagar or the other, or the other scholars that wrote other versions of it. So yes, it was definitely in existence. What you see also in the Katha Sarit Sagar is you see the culture of the Satwahan kingdom. You see the culture of that, of that area and that century rather than Kashmir. So there are some Kashmiri overlays. There's some gloss, but really most of it, the substance of it is actually more historically accurate for the Satavahan kingdom. 